Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Galatians is a letter that was written by the Apostle Paul. In my opinion, this is one of the most vital books of the Holy Bible as far as the New Testament is concerned because it tells us the importance of understanding that we can only be saved by the grace of God. So with that, we're going to dive right into this wonderful book of Galatians with the very first verse in this very first chapter. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Now, the reason why Paul wrote this is because he was what you call a Johnny come lately as far as the apostles are concerned. Okay. He was not one of the original 12 that walked with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, whose true name in the Hebrew tongue is Yeshua HaMashiach. And so that's why Paul says, I'm not an apostle made by men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, his name being Jehovah, who raised his son Jesus from the dead. So he's saying, I'm going to state my credentials coming out the gate because there were a lot of people who were saying that Paul was not really a man of God. All right. He goes on to say in verse two, he says, not only am I addressing you, but he says, and all the brethren which are with me, unto the churches of Galatia. And I just love the way Paul did not have a big head. He didn't think he was better than anyone else. And there's a lesson in there for us. We should all consider ourselves on the same plane because we are. We're all sinners in need of the Savior, Jesus. No matter what God has chosen us to do, we're still all on the same level. And so that's why Paul includes all the brothers that were with him as though they were literally writing this letter as well. He says in verse 3, he says, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4, who gave himself, who gave himself? Jesus gave himself for our sins. Why did he do it? That he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Verse 5, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So this is very, very important that you and I understand that the grace of God is not a license to sin but it's the help that we needed in order to win. Because as long as you and I are down here in the flesh, we're gonna struggle with the law of sin dwelling in our members. And no matter how hard we try to walk uprightly, we're gonna fall short. And so that's where the grace of God comes in to help fill up the gap where we fall short. And he says, grace be to you and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. So because of what the Godhead has done, we have peace with God, 
because Jesus is our only hope. There's no other way that you and I can be saved into his kingdom. And Paul explains that beautifully throughout this letter, okay? He points out over and over again in his letters that Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins, which is very important. Because if you just take a moment to think about that, he came down from heaven, having created this very world that he came down to with his father for the sole purpose of suffering for sins that you and I have committed and dying an excruciatingly painful death on the cross at Calvary, shedding that precious blood of his so you and I could be forgiven and be in the position to receive eternal life. That alone, when you fully understand it, makes you love him and the Father, okay? So Christ did that so we would have a chance, so he could deliver us from this present evil world, Paul says. And he did it all according to the will of God, our Father. So this was not something he came up with all by himself. This is something that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit decided before the foundation of the world. And when we understand this, it makes us love him. That's why John says we love him because he first loved us. And when, when we say him, we're talking about the Godhead, the Father Jehovah, Jesus Christ, his son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. So Paul continues with verse six. He says, I marvel. That means I wonder or I'm amazed that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. He says, I just can't believe that you are so easily deceived, that you're going away from the gospel of Christ, which is the good news that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. He said, I can't believe that you're moving away so easily because there were false brethren who were coming down and telling them that they had to keep all the laws of Moses in order to be saved. You know, they, they, they needed to believe in Jesus as Savior, but they had to keep all those laws too. And you can read about that in Acts chapter 15. So this is what he's talking about. He says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace. That word grace means undeserved kindness, unmerited favor, unto the grace of Christ, unto another gospel, seven, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. He says, so what they're coming telling you is not good news. It's not another gospel. Okay. It's false teaching. That's what, th that's what it is. He says in verse eight, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. He says, if we come back saying something different than what we told you originally, he says, let us and anybody else who comes saying something different be accursed. That means excommunicated, cut off from the body of Christ. Say, if, if we do that too, cut us off. And so that's why it's so important that you and I study to show ourselves to prove unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because many false teachers have entered into the world and they use this very Bible to deceive and mislead people. They pull things out of context. And so that's why you got to study yourself and pick up the subject and follow the subject through and stick to what you learn from God's word. If you do that, you won't be misled. And so Paul said, if anybody come and preaching something else, even if it's us, let them be cut off. He says in verse nine, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be a curse. You see that? Verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? He said, is it me that's doing the persuading or God? He says, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Very important. You know, if you are concerned about church boards and church bodies and, and reverend and this deacon and that guy and that... Something's wrong. 
You, you ought to get your walking, your marching orders from the word of God, from God himself. Okay? Even if you are a part of a so-called local church. If they're not sticking to the book, something's wrong. And you shouldn't be following them. You ought to follow God. If nobody in your congregation wants to stick to God's word, you should be the one that's following God's word. Okay? And so that's what Paul is saying here. If I was want to please men, then I wouldn't be Christ's servant. You should only want to please Christ because he's the one who's going to judge you. These people down here playing church and playing important, they don't have a heaven to call you up to or a hell to cast you down into. You ought to live for Christ and Christ alone because he's the one who died for you. He's the one who paid off your sin debt and he is the one who's going to judge you. Got it? So Paul says, I'm a servant of Christ. He says in verse 11, but I certify you. That means I make you understand. God is using me to help you really understand the truth. I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. I'm here to let you know that this is not something that came from man. Well, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. He says, I didn't get it from no man. Jesus himself revealed it to me. All right. And you can read about Paul's conversion in Acts chapter 8 and 9. And so Paul says, I didn't get it from no man. Jesus struck me down with a blinding light on the road to Damascus and converted me. And then he sent me off to Arabia and he taught me what I'm supposed to teach. That's what he's saying here. He says in verse 13, for ye have heard of my conversation. Now, when you look up that word in the Strong's, it means behavior. For ye have heard of my behavior in time past in the Jews' religion, Paul says, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. You know uh, what, uh, what, what I was doing before I was converted. All of you have heard about that. He says in verse 14, he says, And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of of my fathers. He says, when I was on that road to hell serving the devil, I outdid all those so-called Jewish leaders who were also being misled by Satan. You know, he says, I took it a step further. You know, they just persecuted the saints in Jerusalem and, and ran them out of there. Paul went to the high priest and got authority to go and follow the Christians wherever they went so he can bring them back and make sure they were put to death. So he took it to a whole nother level, he's saying, when he was misled. He says in verse 15, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, 16, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I concurred not with flesh and blood, that word concurred means consulted. I didn't go talk it over with nobody. When Christ called me, that was it. He says in verse 17, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. He says, the Lord called me on that road to Damascus, and then when he converted me, he told me to go to Arabia. He didn't tell me to go up to Jerusalem and meet up with Peter and the rest of the body. He took him to Arabia, and that's what Christ taught him, everything concerning salvation by grace. And so Paul is the chief writer of the New Testament. I like to call him the Moses of the New Testament. And it is vital that we study the letters that the Apostle Paul was guided by God's Spirit to write, because that's where we find our doctrine today. Okay, you want to know what you're supposed to be doing? Read Paul's letters, okay? If you do that, you can't go wrong. And so he says, I went to Arabia, and then I went back to Damascus, verse 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode within 15 days. 19. But other of the apostles saw I none save, which means except James, the Lord's brother. So he says, the Lord guided me to Arabia, back to Damascus. Three years later, I went up to Jerusalem, met Peter, and I saw the Lord's brother James. 
That's it. I was with Peter for 15 days. Verse 20, he says, now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. He says, I'm telling you how it went down. I'm not lying to you. 21, afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. 22, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. He says, they didn't know me. So the Lord sent me to a new territory, okay? And, and they heard about me, but they never they had never seen me. Verse 23, he says, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. That's all they knew about me, that I had been converted. 24, and they glorified God in me. And they praise almighty God because he had quite a reputation as a Christian hunter. I mean, he was killing them. I mean, getting them and having them tortured and killed. And this went on for years and years until the Lord looked down and saw the zeal that he had. And God said, I can use him. You know, he, he got the zeal, but he, he, he's on the wrong road. So I'm going to take him and use him for my own use. And that's the grace of God. You know, God can do whatever he wants with whom he wants. And so Paul is one of the people in the Bible that I look up to and admire the most. And I can identify with him because I was quite a sinner too before the Lord straightened me out. But the Lord hasn't used me to do what Paul has done. Paul is the chief writer of the New Testament. And so we're going to go through this great book of Galatians one chapter at a time because it's very important that we understand the letters that was written by the Apostle Paul being guided by God's Holy Spirit. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. paypal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelle. For Zelle, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. It's godwear.store. So please check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So until next time, 
This is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.